Hey, what's up, Coach? Welcome back to the podcast. Today, we interview Coach Jim Swift. Jim is the owner of Swift Performance Training uh, based in San Antonio, Texas. Jim has been part of our consulting program over the last year. He's an awesome dude, great coach, uh, super successful. I think you'll learn a lot from today's interview with how he was able to build a six-figure training business. Yeah, so that place is already like, you know, lower six figures into debt still. And it was, gosh, the the, the, the marketing was bad. I mean, for the 20,000 square foot facility, it was like $20,000 a month just for rent. So that, that alone puts a lot of pressure on you. And you're still trying to, you know, get paid and everything yourself. So there's a lot of pressure on that. Um, we all kind of broke apart and went to Gold's Gym and we did pitch the sports performance idea to them just because they have like 25 locations in the San Antonio area mm -hmm. and there's enough parents there with kids. Uh, we thought it was a great idea, but they were focusing on gold's fit to compete with people leaving for CrossFit. That was all they cared about. Um, so I ended up doing a lot of, uh, like kind of picking up athletes that I had trained before at the other place velocity and, uh, trained them on the outside. Eventually I got fired because I had created my own website, social media, you know, the whole no compete thing that you obviously apparently can do in Texas. I don't know. Right. But, so that was, uh, that's coming up in five years, uh, Labor Day weekend. That'll be five years, uh, that they, uh, let me go and everything. And that was about five months before I was going to leave on my own in 2016. Uh, right. So you were already planning on leaving anyway. I was planning on. Yeah. Uh, the hardest part was not having enough money tucked away to make that leave. <laughs> right. Right. Um, how, how many kids were you training when you, when they fired you? I mean, I had like 10 kids, but they were all going to be like sophomores, juniors, and seniors. But if I get fired Labor Day weekend and most of my sports are football, it's football season. I have no clients now. Right. Yeah, so I was, uh, once again, starting from, you know, ground up and, um, uh, any kids I did have that trained was very uh, little just on the weekends mainly. And then I found some adults in my area. There were, you know, I say adults like twenties and thirties uh, to train and I was doing that in my apartment gym. Mm -hmm. So uh, just kind of faking it until I make it and everything else um, just kind of figuring it out as I went. And luckily that year, the, the kids I did train did really well. One of them ended up being um, all city and everything as a running back. And, um, that brought along like six of his teammates into the year. And then that brought along all the rival schools. So That's that just kind of started up. And uh, every year I've gotten a little bit better, a little bit smarter at things. Things have come, uh, you know, with trial and error, more established. A lot of the things when I first, uh, I would say when I first went through your, uh, like some of your, uh, you know, do it yourself programs and everything. Uh, a lot of that stuff, I was like, man, I did do some of that already or, I looked at that that didn't work out too well at first, but maybe that's something I can go back to. But um, a lot of that resonated with me because um, I didn't realize how much of that I was pushed into. I mean, a lot of it is going to be trial and error. There's never a perfect recipe, mm -hmm. but you got to have some sort of structure to it. So all that was uh, building up. I, you know, ended up having several more uh, all city and all state uh, football players, girls running track, volleyball players, um, baseball players a lot of recognition from those standings and then, you know, all of them getting scholarships. So doing that, and I finally kind of got more into the uh, private side of training or at least private small groups uh, mm -hmm. where I can add in the, the weight training and add in my fitness side with nutrition, which really helps out with parents. So I was adding, I, I've been adding the complete package for at least three and a half out of the last five years now. And, uh, you know, this is, um, uh, and now I'm moving more into, uh, I think we had, I mentioned to you, uh, more into offensive alignment, defense alignment, mm -hmm. because, um, there's an offensive alignment trainer here that teaches me a lot of stuff. I go through a lot of the same materials. So when I do my sports forms training and we have linemen, I try to do the athletic side, but also know how I can relate that information. So they know how it carries over. Um, mm -hmm but then also know how I can modify things to where it fits more into their position. And so um, pretty much when that guy, he's part-time, uh, whenever he doesn't want to take on anybody else, he uh, gives them to me and I kind of go through the basics of position training, but also um, building that foundation for, uh, you know, being a faster, stronger athlete. Gotcha. So do you feel like you're starting to 
niche down more with like football? Yeah. Um, football is always a favorite and down here in South Texas, you know, and just Texas in general, football is King, but definitely South Texas. You are, if you're a male, you're probably football first and then, then maybe you do wrestling track and baseball. So, um, Mm -hmm. uh, so I mean, I'll naturally get some of those other guys just because they're also football players. But, um, as far as what kind of football players, uh, I think it went from maybe if I did like 40 athletes in a year, I maybe had like, three offensive linemen and now this past year I only had like five kids who weren't offensive linemen <laughs> wow so it's uh five yeah so uh it's definitely moving in that way and um I'm actually loving it they're in football they're definitely some of the hardest workers uh, their ankles sore they'll still come in you just modify they're not gonna be like I need to take a week off they'll they'll get down to work as long as you can modify and work around that ankle they're you know some of the biggest workhorses you go for meat in life mm-hmm. yeah no I saw uh, that little clip you sent me, you, you were on the news yeah. a couple of days ago. Um, those are, those are huge. Yeah, no, that was awesome. Um, and that guy, so the guy that works at the news station, he, he work he works out at the gym that, that you go to. Is that right? Yeah. His trainer came from gold's gym that I used to be at, uh, when so all the gyms that closed down, right. When they reopened, he decided to leave corporate uh you know he had been with corporate for like 13 years and uh you know kind of gone his own he had all the clientele um our gym is only like a mile and a half away from the other place so it's perfect Mm -hmm. and um but yeah that that guy's uh has been at our gym for since june and he was always watching me train the athletes this uh summer and um then he kind of just popped you know he was was walking by just kind of having a small conversation i was like oh maybe I didn't know who he was. I haven't really watched like local news sports in a while. And uh, right. but I knew it was familiar. And uh, I just, I just assumed he was just somebody who had kids who played sports or used to play sports. And he just loved talking to kids about what they do still. And then, and then he approached me uh, the next day about uh, doing an interview with my guys. That's cool. Yeah, no, that was a really cool piece they did on that. Um, Cause they, I saw, I don't know if I watched all day, but they were interviewing the kids Mm-hmm. And then they had you on and they, they showed a lot of the different exercises and stuff that, that you're putting them through. Um, yeah, no, that's awesome. What do you think has been the biggest business lesson that you've had to learn since you've started and owned and operated your own business? Uh, I mean, of course in sales in general, I think is, um, just cause somebody inquires and says they'll get back to you. They won't always get back to you. Uh, they might think that it's the biggest joke that you're selling or, you know, like we always said, life just gets busy. 10 other things could have popped on their radar in their household right after that. And, uh, you know, you're just not the biggest priority yet. So, uh, making sure that I do follow-ups and everything. And then of course, uh, learning f- from you is, uh, don't be afraid to talk on the phone. Cause even though we are in a messaging world, uh, there's still something about talking on the phone to people and just mm-hmm. even to see, I, I think there's even something powerful about even just uh, offering to set up a phone call with somebody that mm-hmm. kind of like shoots differently versus like, Hey, let me just text you. Mm-hmm. Um, the only time people really don't care about that, that I'm realizing is maybe if like, Oh man, you've trained like one of my son's older brothers, like 10 friends. Like I, I, I I'm, I'm ready to give my credit card information right now. But for the most part, if you at least just offer to set up a, a, like a phone call, you know, 20, 30 minute phone call, um, there's definitely something powerful about that in a uh, text messaging, instant messaging world. So I would definitely tell everybody if you're not comfortable with that, get used to it, um, even just on a minimal level. And then um, the other organized part is in the beginning, I did just do like cash walk-ins and I got very lucky that I had so much consistency. But if I could go back, you know, it would um, definitely uh, try to assert myself, you know, be a little more confident with uh, having to take at least a month up front, uh, you know, get credit card information, something like that. But that's all, that's all trial and error right there. Um, and right. Uh, I, I could say I'd go back and change that, but it also worked out to where, you know, I wasn't confident mm-hmm. yet, and, but it's, right. you know, it is what it is. It's been how you look at it. Yeah. I look back at those days when, when I was doing cash and check, um, like I, I would, go back and, and try to do things differently. But I know if I didn't do that way, like it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have forced me to figure things out the way that I did. 
Um, because I mean, I just ran into a lot right. of bad customers who would say they would pay and they wouldn't. And, and it was just because I had it set up that way though. Like it was all my fault Right. looking back at it. Um, but, uh, but yeah. And so let's, let's talk about sales for a second. So you, you mentioned, you know, setting up the call, mm. like being confident on the call. How much more confident do you feel now? Like talking to parents over the phone about your program than you did when you were, you know, first started training. Uh, definitely a lot more confident. And I think the confidence comes in. Uh, it, I wasn't, I, I didn't lack confidence uh, because I didn't think my services stunk. I thought I actually had great services and everything. And I was very uh, scientific and um, groomed really well by guys who had been on the West coast before. So I knew compared to down here, that slow pace moving that it was going to be really good stuff. Um, but I think the, confidence needed for the sales calls was going to be coming from knowing what I'm going to talk about. If I know what I'm going to talk about, what I'm going to ask, and I'm going to direct the whole conversation, then I'm going to get a sale off somebody who is, um, who is not coming because of referrals. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so that's helped out a lot, you know, like, you know, um, I always did do though, what school are you coming from? Because I always like to know, like, am I getting more from the same school? Cause I, uh, Churchill high school here has been, a. Uh, I I mean, they've been support, there's been family supporting me for like five years. And so I always want to kind of know what school they feed into around me. And I kind of like getting those numbers, but definitely asking more position, um, just kind of getting to know their bigger goals. Uh, not just why do you get faster? It's like, well, how does getting faster change your life? Why I get better at football? Well, how does that help? It's like, well, okay. Like, I want to earn a scholarship in like two years. Okay, great. That's now we're getting somewhere. So, mm -hmm. um, the questions help me control the conversation, but also dig deeper into that person. And then, you know, if, if you have at least, you know, even 70% of that structured already in the other 30%, you can, um, you have a lot of ammo to dominate with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing I've realized is, you know, talking to, to a prospect over the phone, it's, it all comes down to how you control the conversation yeah. and what are the questions that you ask that get them to realize, you know what, like this isn't something we want. This is something that we need. Right. And it's just a completely different way of selling than just trying to hard sell people on why they should train with you. Um, Cause ultimately they should, they should be able to figure out why they should train with you through the questions that you ask them. Like and right. it's almost there telling you why. Um, cool, man. And I know the last couple of years, uh, if you're comfortable with me talking about this, like last couple of years, you've done, I think over a hundred K right per year. Yeah, this is, um, even through the pandemic, this will be the third straight year that hit that mark. Cool. So let, let me ask you this question. Like when you first originally started, when you're training those kids on the side, when you were uh, at your last job, uh, like when you thought of that number, hundred grand, like was that something that was like really far out of reach? Were you like, wow, I don't, I don't know if I can make that much, or were, were you like, yeah, I can definitely make that? Like, honestly, hundred grand, hundred grand didn't pop in my head. My 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 first goal was just to, um, I was like, I know I can be stable enough. If I get smarter at outside spending, we always talk about trainers needing to be smarter at outside spending. But also, um, my first goal was basically a new teacher salary in the area. I was like, that's, I think, sustainable. Single, you know, single, no kids, no, no, nobody else support. I was like, I think that's you know about fifty one k here, mm -hmm. and so I was like, that's a good goal to reach for. And that was very realistic to me. Uh, my parents were teachers for sixty five total years recently. And so, um, yeah, it was, th that was my first goal right there, honestly, was the hit. And then um, I started reading more on uh, John Goodman at the Personal Training Development Center. And then, you know, he's like, he's always talking sometimes the most simple goal to have every month. Uh, one year to the next is just $1,000 more a month. And mm -hmm. so, um, and so I was like, you know, I hit that, eventually you're going to get there. And that was, and, and that was perfectly fine for me. Um, I always, I was like, you know, as long as it's, it's slow and steady, but it's sustainable. I'd rather have that than hit something really big and then tank. 
Uh, and right. so that was, uh, and I didn't fear tanking really, but I was like, I'm, I'm patient enough to steadily go up. I mean, at the same time, how many people, if you went up only a thousand dollars a month, let's say this August to next August, every month, like how many people get $12,000 raises every year? Right. So no that's just, that, that's just how I kind of thought of it. If I mm-hmm. can do that, then eventually I'll be somewhere. But I hadn't even thought about six figures, I guess, because I, I didn't really even know any trainers that made six figures. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was right. My, my, my thing is trainers, they only last like two to five years maybe. Uh, and so I was like, you know, as long as I keep going up a little bit and I can last longer than five years, I'll be fine. So actually the first year I started off at, uh, on my, the first full year on my own was at only 43 K. And then the second was 58 K, which I was let down at. Cause I actually had a bigger goal of making 65 K. And I was like, man, I fell short. And I had a buddy who's a banker and he's like, yeah, but you, you, you made that much more. And you didn't work that much more hours. <laughs> right. Good point. I was like, okay, I'll get off. Like, let me have 72 hours, of my pity party and I'll get over it. <laughs> right. And then, so those, so those are the first two years and then year three, four, now five, uh, right at six. Right. No, that's awesome, man. Yeah. And it's cool because like you, you had a concrete goal when you first started, right? You, you talked about like the teacher salary and, yeah, and, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't this unrealistic goal of, all right, I'm going to make a hundred grand my first year. Like, right. And I see a lot of people do that. Unfortunately, they, they have this, this hundred K goal when they first start. And, you know, I have seen some people who have actually pulled that off, but it's like very rare. Yeah. Um, and you know, it takes time, takes multiple years, uh, for a lot of people to get there. And also one, one thing I want to touch on with you is like, when you think about the financial side of business, like when you, when you break down a hundred grand, how, how frugal are you with that money? Cause, cause I know you're not like posting a bunch of crap on Instagram and like, I don't know, you're not like wasting and blowing through that money that I, I know a lot of people would if they got that. So like how, how frugal are you with like your finances? Uh, I get better every year. Um, you know, I'm definitely not as Dave Ramsey as I'd like to be, but it's definitely something you learn uh, more and more, um, you know, once you have a little bit more money than what you're used to. And, you know, de- if it's more than what you, uh, grew up with, then, uh, it, it can be a struggle, but, uh, it's definitely gotten better. I have been able to pay off a lot more. Unfortunately, when I first started training, um, my, the car I had was paid off, but it had leaking head gaskets and which fixing that would exceed the value because it was a 90, it was a 97 SUV. So it wouldn't have, uh, the value wouldn't have been worth it. And so I ended up, uh, I ended up having to get like a truck and the best deal was to get like a new Toyota Tundra. But I was like, you know, Toyota Tundra though, those are going to last like 20 years. So I was like long-term. And if that means I'm not having to spend more time out of my day in between training to like go get something patched up, something fixed very often, I was like, that's a good trade off in my opinion. I can do that. Yeah. Um, time. But, so, I mean, that's probably the biggest, um, but even then that's, uh, the biggest purchase I've had to make. And then, um, I mean, uh, my girlfriend, and I live in a house now and, uh, it's just making sure that you don't spend money somewhere else that you might need when you're going to like home Depot or Lowe's to pick something up. But, uh, it's the, the frugal side is definitely getting better. It's getting smarter. Everybody's, uh, frugal side is a lot different than others. Um, mm-hmm. And, uh, so, but I mean, actually it's, uh, it's, it gets better every year. So that's, and that, that's, that, I think that usually comes when you solidify your next three to five, 10 years at a time on what you want to accomplish, uh, even mm-hmm. from a financial sense, like and if that's pay a certain amount of debt off only, like then that's, you know, something to strive for and keep you uh, disciplined. Right. Yeah. I see, I see this happen and not, not just with trainers, but with most people, it's like, whatever their lifestyle is, like if they're making a certain amount, if once they start making a little bit more money, their lifestyle goes up. So Mm -hmm. like they, they stay in this rat race with money where it's like they could be making, they could be crushing it, uh, making two, $300,000 in a year. And they're, 
the purchases, the stuff that's going on with their lifestyle keeps going up. So like they're, they're not actually saving any money. Yeah. Um, they're, they're just kind of wasting it. And that's why like I, when, whenever I talk to coaches over the phone, I always, I always ask them like, I mean, straight up, how, how much money are you making? Um, and how are you with money? And a lot, I know a lot of people like they want to make more money, but they don't know what to do with that. And right. then, then it just kind of, it's, I don't know, it's not really all the hard work that they put in cause they're just blowing it. <laughs> um, so it's kind of, it's kind of a frustrating thing to see people do it that way, but you know, everyone's going to do whatever they want. And, and yeah. I know by being frugal, that's, I think that's the best possible way to run a business. And especially if you look at the last shoot man since March, like how many businesses went away because they had no cash reserves. And those are all big names too. Yeah. Like, like big names are going away and it's like, if they're going away, like what were they doing all the money? I mean, a lot of it was like dead circulation. Like some of these big corporate gyms I was saying for years, it, they're not really circulating. They're just like, you know, <laughs> plugging numbers into a computer and making it look like they are. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost, to me, it's not even a real business. It's like yeah. they, on paper, they're making billions of dollars mm-hmm. and then, you know, one down month, they're done. They're bankrupt. And, uh, yeah. And, and I know with, with coaches and trainers, like that's why I think it's really important to, to be really smart with the money. And I, I know you mentioned Dave Ramsey. Uh, I've yeah. gone, uh, I have his book back over there in the corner. Um, yeah. Just like very simple advice on like how to manage money. And those are things we never learn when we're, when we're younger. Like, yeah. I mean, sounds crazy that you know we're not educated on that when we're kids uh, it's like you have to just kind of figure it out and people who figure it out financially will always do better than those who don't uh, i mean i i learned a little bit growing up from my parents because they were teachers you know they didn't have as much money as they wanted to uh but at the same time i was also taught you know when you make more than a teacher salary one day you know make sure you enjoy a little bit of that extra and i think that's a double-edged sword because what is a little, what does a little extra even mean? <laughs> like, and then you, and then you like, you get in that rat race like you're talking about where like lifestyle is going up as your income and everything goes up. But if you don't have that solid gap, you have like, once again, no savings, uh, short term or long term. So, uh, mm-hmm. uh, we definitely, even if we're taught, we definitely need a, a little bit stricter definition of, you know, spend, you know, enjoy a little bit extra. Like that means go take a vacation once in a while. That's cool. but it's uh, like, and, and I'm, I'm more down for that. I would say it's the everyday spending of going to get like Starbucks and like eating out and everything that you weren't able to do when you're younger because y'all didn't have the money to that right. uh, people blow the most money over. It's the social and entertainment side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. The easiest way is just you go look at your, your bank statement and you're like, Oh, okay. Well that's exactly what I'm using all of my money on. And all of that adds up. Like, I mean, it's, simple stuff that I mean I know a lot of people don't pay attention to uh cool man so you've been you've been in this game for a while like what's Mm -hmm. what do you feel like is your your goal over the next couple years for for your business uh so I mean I still do the I still do the fitness side uh during the daytime while the kids are at school or while they're you know at school camps and so I have I have those clients um and, uh, I, you know, I enjoy having adults around, uh, time to time, you know, even just a few of them, uh, kind of bounces out my day a little better. Mm-hmm. And so, um, I'll hold on that a little bit, but, uh, I'm definitely not a trainer who jumps at trying to have like, Oh, my five and 6 a.m. are open. It's like, I try to not, I try to, I, I work out at five and 6 a.m., but that's like still my time. It's to, it's a totally different mentality. Mm-hmm. And, um, so, but, uh, as I've talked to you before for the adult fitness side, uh, I've been doing the online uh, fitness coaching program. So the goal is to always keep building that up, um, you know, a little bit, and that'll be a slower growth, uh, just cause that's a, that's a pretty saturated market, you know, the internet and everything. Um, but you know, once again, I'm all about slow and steady as long as it gets sustainable and hitting a teacher salary, even on that, on top of, you know, a six figure sports business is, would be awesome. Mm-hmm. And then, um, so that's a goal. Um, I, I did experiment of all during all times that I'd already planned on um, doing more middle school camps. Cause I felt like I need to get middle schoolers more ready for high school because we're falling behind during that time. And that's why they're 
losing out on recognition compared to other big cities in Texas for recruiting. And so I had already decided to go into more of those classes, at least in the summer. Then I'll figure out uh, during the rest of the year uh, when I can do that, um, at least the spring, you know, and that, that all happened during the pandemic. So that was, uh, it, but it was good. It humbled me. Uh, I only did, I could have had a class of like 15 probably. It only took like eight to 10, uh, keep it small, keep it private and exclusive. Uh, there's plenty of big places around here uh, we've seen pop up that have like, you know, like 30 of those kids. Um, but I have high school guys like, yeah, I've done places like that. You know, after a while, you just don't really have attention. It's not really about you enough. Uh, they're like, you know, we already lose reps at school. Why would we want to go to a second place? that's going to lose reps. Right. And um, so growing the middle school groups um, and not only because I like I want to get them ready, but uh, my retention for kids at, right now is like anywhere from like two to six years. That's amazing, man. Yeah. So it, it doesn't really take me that much more kids per year um, to make what I want, even after the others like leave off to college and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm, I'm uh, getting a little bit more middle schoolers um, and trying to feed off that. And then um, uh, I do eventually want to add in a, uh, online athlete uh, mentorship that I can do um, all that kind of stuff. So uh, just any way that I can bring in money, obviously without having to work from 5am to 8pm, you know, uh, I already had the online fitness side down. So adding in the online athlete side uh, while I don't hundred percent know how to get all that going um, and it could be a little slower, which is fine. Uh, It's definitely something to consider. And I think that would, uh, even if it, I only did that for like three years and it was like, oh, okay, you know, it wasn't worth my time as much. I think there's still value in learning. If you can c- communicate better with kids via zoom, then you could probably communicate and coach better in person anyways. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. So I'm going to take a piece of what you said. Um, your retention's two to six years. Like tell everyone how much easier it is to run your business when you have your business set up that way versus like constantly having to find new clients month after month. Cause I I can guarantee you the average person that's a trainer in any sport, their retention is probably somewhere between two and I would think two and four months less. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's really awesome. Cause like, like you said, you have less players to go after, but you can still push a bigger ceiling if you want to. Um, you know, and I always try to go for more and more and I'll, you know, I'll figure out later if I need to, you know, cap my capacity, but it definitely feels awesome that, you know, going into this summer that I think compared to last summer, there was only five of my, you know, most, con- uh, f- five of my oldest consistent athletes had, uh, are, went off to college recently. And all I had to do was replace them. And I had, a, and I ended up signing up a group of like eight to 10 middle schoolers. I, uh, I got a bunch of new linemen. I, I probably have like eight new kids in general in person uh, right. on the one on two side. So um, makes it a lot easier. Um, a lot easier to replace, you know, a few once every year <laughs> mm-hmm. like going into the summer or end of summer. And so, uh, and, and, you really get to know the kids a lot more. You kind of grow up with them and everything. And so um, the trust and value is always there. And uh, parents definitely uh, sing your praises a lot more. It's like, yeah, he's been – like one of my kids, Ryan, he's going to be a sophomore in high school. I've been training him since the middle of his sixth grade year. That's awesome, man. Yeah. So, I mean, I literally see these kids grow up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You'll probably see that kid till he goes off to college. Yeah. I mean, that's – He's got, it'll be over five years. I'm going to have him, So that's going to be pretty amazing. Dude, that's, that's really awesome. Yeah. And I know that, um, it's funny because we live in the same city. I I know I don't, I mean, I live North of San Antonio now. Um, but we've been here the whole time without ever knowing each other. Uh, I think until like two years ago, maybe two years ago. Um, and, uh, I I wish we would have connected earlier because that, I think that would have been really cool to, to know you. Uh, a lot earlier on when you were starting and as I was growing my thing. Uh, but let's say there's a coach watching right now and they're like, man, you know, I want to get to Jim's level. I want to be able to train kids full time and 
I want to be able to do that every single day and, and quit my job or whatever. Uh, what would, what do you think would be the most valuable advice you could give to someone who's watching or listening and they're like, you know, I'm tired of my job. I, I, I want to be a sports performance trainer or just a trainer in any sport. Like, what would you tell them? Um, obviously the stuff we've been talking about on here and then the stuff you talk about a lot on your uh, channels and your podcasts, I would say, uh, play with some of that business, uh, advice on how to sell. Um, obviously if you're going to make that leap out of a full-time job into this kind of job, then, um, definitely, uh, become smarter at spending your money and definitely stash money away while you can. And then, um, as far as training goes, whether you're going to be doing soccer, basketball, you know, speed and agility, strength training, um, don't try to impress and entertain social media by doing the most fancy things like love that and try to try to reinvent the wheel. Um, the wheels invented is just how you drive it really. And you know, how you take care of the wheel. That's all, uh, all that really matters. I've, I have people that signed up recently that like I've watched your stuff on social media for like five years and every, you know, compared to every trainer we've tried and that like they've tried a, a new trainer, like almost every eight months, they're like, you change some things up, but you are still the most consistent style of training, mm -hmm. and, uh, smart style of training we've seen. And so they finally, you know, after some years took the plunge going to like their varsity years. And so, um, find out what's tried and true. Um, you know, you have the Facebook group, talk to as many of those coaches throughout the United States on what, uh, they, that like their training philosophy is talks. Uh, I think talking philosophy is very important for coaches. Um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and they do that all the time. NFL, MLS, everybody, everybody has like some sort of coaching philosophy, you know, um, it's never, it's never really like a hundred, like 80 degree, like different or anything. But um, you want to study the pros and cons of different things and kind of help you fine tune your own. And, uh, but also know that what you're doing, while it might be a little different, it's still similar to what some of the best, you know, trainers that do what you do are doing. Um, what I do, I get feedback now from, I have a friend who he's a head strength coach at Longview High School now. And he was uh, strength coaching in college. And he, he's like, yeah, what you're doing. He's like, we've he's like, we do here at Longview. Longview won the state title like two years ago. Um, That's awesome. First time in 81 years. And then, <laughs> wow. um, and then um, he's like, he's like a lot of what you do, we do. And, and we, we were doing in college, you're just doing a little modified because you may not have the exact same equipment as we do. Mm -hmm. um, and you're, and you're still setting a foundation. And then um, I have guys come back from like Columbia university, UT, A&M that are like, a lot of what you do is the exact same language and process they kind of go about in their strength training room and everything. So it's very important that not only you talk business with other people who have done business and kind of understand that stuff, but also training and training philosophies and just uh, avoiding the fluff that's going to be trendy. Um, people, people will be made, will be amazed by the simple stuff you do better than anybody else and the results you get. That's right. what they're going to be. They're going to be amazed at, it's five years later and this guy over here is still helping kids get scholarships. These kids are still being all district, all city, all state. Right. Yeah. And when I look at the coaches that are part of our group that, that you're in, um, to me, like the, the true sign of a successful coach, it's going to be the one who's the most consistent. And that's the thing that you've done over, you know, over your career here. It's you, you, you're not this flashy dude. Like uh, no. you just like put your head down. You know you want to help kids. You're great at what you do. Uh, you get results with kids, and you just keep like recycling what you're doing over and over yeah. and over um, because you have a great system that has proven to work really well. And um, that's the thing. Like, I mean, it doesn't really bug me anymore. But I, I know, like on Instagram and and facebook and stuff like that there's a lot of people it's just all flash it's like all flash zero mm -hmm. cash <laughs> and everybody wants everybody wants the likes and the, and the follows i mean it's that's all fine and dandy but you can have fifty thousand followers and only like five people giving you money from it <laughs> right yeah yeah and and it's it all comes down to knowing who you want to serve and serving them and yeah 
they're going to exchange money with you because you can solve their problem period. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. And you've been a great example of just being super consistent and, and it's been cool to see like you post in the Facebook group, you know, the, the, all the new clients that you've added over the last year, like it's been, it's all just consistent. Like it's yeah. not just like, Hey, I, I did this all today. It's, you know, it's week after week. You're just very consistent guy. And that's going to be the ingredients to anyone who's looking to start or grow their mm-hmm. business to become more successful. And, uh, yeah, man, you're a great example of that. And I know anyone watching or listening should model what you did because it's like that works. And anyone that I've been around, especially coaches that have gone through our program, the ones who are the most consistent there, they, like, I've never seen anyone fail if they're consistent. Like people who, who think, ah, well, you know, it's been two months and I, I haven't gotten any clients yet. Well, you know, that's been two months. I talked to someone like you who's been doing this for, you know, a long time. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, cool, man. Now, I, I, you know, I first want to say thanks for jumping on here. Is there anything oh, else yeah. you want to add before we head out today? Uh, I mean, try to, you know, just must you said, be consistent. Anything you want to be successful at in life, you got to be consistent. Uh, that's a perfect way of saying it. Uh, don't be afraid to talk to others who have done what you've done, even if they might sound scary. Uh, you know, um, you never know. Uh, you could you could be wrong about how scary they are. Uh, everybody is honestly willing to help, especially with the whole uh, uplifting of small businesses these days. Um, every, it's kind of a, a good tribal thing going on right now. And then um, uh, don't don't be afraid to ask uh, your athletes and their parents, like e- even if they are not complaining about anything and they're giving you all the money like every month, every quarter, whatever. Uh, don't be afraid to ask anybody who has done well with you as well as those who they did okay with you. And let's say they didn't stick as long. Just be like, what can I, like, what can I do better? What can I do more of? Uh, some people will fly out and say it just wasn't for us because we were not committed enough. We were not consistent enough. You did everything great. You were always trying to reach out. You were always trying to, you know, raise things to a higher standard, um, that we needed. We just were not ready. Uh, but when we are, you know, you're, you're definitely the guy to call back. Don't be afraid to get that information. Um, I, I ask, uh, you know, for testimonies and surveys all the time for people who have trained at different lengths and, uh, you just never know, even if they didn't really say a whole lot of cheering that, you know, they, they might have the best things, um, the best things that you did, even if you didn't know it yet. Mm-hmm. Okay. So they might tell you things that, oh, man, that's a little punch in the stomach, but trust me, if you've been, if you've been genuine to everybody and you've been consistent, you really won't find the worst uh, feedback from people. Right. Uh, it's great advice. Cause, cause I know a, a lot of times business owners will just think whatever they do is the, is the best thing. <laughs> and if someone drops out of their program, they take it personal. Um, they're like, and then they never know why. So like right. a successful coach is, is always going to understand why people drop out or, or what can be done better. That way the retention grows stronger. And I know I can guarantee you, man, because you've asked those types of questions, that's, I, I would think a big factor of why your clients have stuck with you for so long. Cause you know what people want. Right? Right. Cause you've already gotten all that feedback. Cause you have asked those tough questions. Um, very cool, man. So thanks so much for, for jumping on today. Um, I'm going to be posting this uh, in, here in the next couple of days. And uh, awesome, dude. Thank you. I appreciate it, Ben.